Today we are going to study about lens and in this lecture we are going to cover all the important points for your PG preparation like applied anatomy, physiology and biochemistry. And this is very important because before going to start cataract we must know the anatomy of the lens. So here we go from the gross anatomy of a lens we must know these 10 points. The first one is the lens is made up of surface ectoderm and the shape of the lens is biconvex. The color of a lens is transparent because there is a no blood supply to the lens that is it is avascular in nature. There is a no nerve supply. The refractive index of a lens is in between 1.386 to 1.406 and the maximum refractive index is present on a center of a lens. So what is the site of a lens? Where it is present? The site of a lens is in patellar fossa and the equatorial diameter is nearly 10 mm. And the last point is what is the power of a lens? It is nearly plus 16 to plus 19 diopter. What are the attachments of a lens? At the periphery it is attached to ciliary body by junules of genes and at the posteriorly it is attached to retroanterior ligament. So what are the structures of a lens? The lens is consist of lens capsule, lens epithelium and lens fibers. The lens capsule is a thin transparent hyaline membrane. It is thickest at pre-equatorial regions and the thinnest at posterior pole. Lens epithelium. Lens epithelium, it is a single layer of cuboidal cells and in equatorial region, this cell becomes columnar and at the posterior region, there is a absence of epithelium. And the third one is lens fibers. Lens fibers make up the most of a lens volume and are lied horizontally and concentrically like layers of an onion. Look at this. Yes, it is looks like onion peels. So these lens fibers arranged compactly as nucleus and cortex. So first we are going to study about nucleus. Nucleus consists of different zones and at the central part there are oldest fibers are present. So depending upon the period of development the different zones of the lens nucleus includes embryonic nucleus, fetal nucleus, infantile nucleus and adult nucleus. So embryonic nucleus it is the innermost part of a nucleus. It consists of primary lens fibers. The fetal nucleus it is lie around the embryonic nucleus. Its fibers meet around the sutures which are anteriorly y-shaped and posteriorly inverted y-shaped. Look at this diagram. And the third one is infantile nucleus. It is surrounds the fetal nucleus and it corresponds to the lens from birth to puberty. And the last one is adult nucleus. The adult nucleus is correspond to puberty to the rest of life and it is surround the infantile nucleus. The second one is cortex. Cortex present at the peripheral part of a nucleus and it is consist of youngest lens fibers. And here we have a simple question that is in which part there are youngest cell fibers are present. And the options are embryonic, fetal, infantile or adult nucleus. What is your guess or what do you think? Yes, at the center part there are the oldest fibers are present that is in embryonic period there are the primary lens fibers are present in central part. So the youngest fibers are present at which part? Yes, absolutely right. It is present on adult part. And suppose if you have option of cortex then must write cortex. So what are the applied physiology and biochemistry behind the lens? 
lens being an avascular structure is depend for its metabolism on chemical exchanges so what are the sources of chemical exchanges the 90% of the nutrients are get from aqueous humor and the 10% is from vitreous humor glucose is very essential for the normal working of a lens then the glucose is rapidly metabolized through four pathways the first one is anaerobic glycolysis or we can say glycolytic pathway in which 80% of the glucose is metabolized second one is hfb shunt pathway and in which nearly 50% of the glucose may be metabolized the third one is krebs citric acid cycle and the fourth one is sorbitol pathway in sorbitol pathway glucose is metabolized by aldose reductase to sorbitol the major problem with sorbitol pathway is that sorbitol cannot diffuse out of a lens and because of that there is gradually increase in osmotic pressure and due to increase in osmotic pressure the fluid from outside start flowing inside and therefore there may be complications of opaque or haziness of a lens and finally it will ends with cataract the sorbitol pathway is mainly active in diseases like diabetes mellitus or in galactosemia so this is all about lens and in which we cover its applied anatomy its structures and applied physiology and biochemistry thank you very much